Hello and welcome to another video of my channel. Thanks for tuning in and yeah, as you might think uh, and can see from the title, we are looking at the Optolong LRGB filters. Yay! Optolong was so nice and have sent me these uh, filter sets so I can test it for you guys. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited because I have no idea how they compare to other filters like the astronomic ones and ZWO ones I had in the past. And I think that's a great opportunity to finally check which filters are the best for you and especially for the price. And uh, yeah, we will have a look at halos and star shape and artifacts and yeah. Let's have a look at graphs because graphs are always fun, I guess. Um, yeah, you can see on the screen right now the transmission of the LRGB filters. And uh, I know, I'm know i not sure if you know what this displays, but you can see right here is the transmission in um, percentage. So 100 is a perfect filter, I would say, with 100%. Um, transmission, so all the light which, which comes from the mirrors or lenses, I guess, uh, come through the filter on the sensor. Um, so if you got something above 90, it's already very good. And you can see they are way above 90, uh, I would say 98 to 95. And um, yeah, right here is the wavelength. Um, you, you got the blue light in, in uh, around uh, 380 to uh, 520 and this is where the graph shows how much light is coming through the blue filter i mean you can see of course the blue filter <laughs> passes blue light we have thought that and the green one passes green light and the red one red um, the luminance is um, letting through all light from um, from the blue until deep red. And the good thing is the luminance filter is already an UV IR cut filter so you don't have to worry about any UV or infrared coming on your sensor. Um, one interesting part which is uh, not noted by many is that you will not capture yellow light uh, if you only capture uh, RGB. Uh, you can see there is no um, transmission when combining these three filters and you will have a um, light pollution filter basically when you combine only RGB. Um, I did this for many years. I have only combined RGB. The problem is that you um, will um, not have many details on depth on your images uh, because some of the natural yellow light from the galaxies for example or from dark nebulae uh, will be missing and um, this is the reason why i always always recommend take your luminance i know it's annoying it's an extra night you need but your images will have a lot more depth and will look just incredible nice and it's also the um, advantage of the monochrome that you have insane insane sensitivity on your sensor and yeah take the luminance, um, just an advice for me, I, I did many years only RGB and now I finally know luminance is king. So one more thing you have to keep in mind is um, when you have to plan is um, how many filters you want to have. Um, I mean, if you buy a set, you will get four filters LRGB and um, if you want to combine it with some um, narrowband filters like um, sulfur, oxygen or hydrogen, uh, you probably need a, a seven position filter wheel. Uh, this is very important when you buy the new gear. You have to check if you want only five filters. That's the uh, only set you can filter wheels you can buy. There are some filter wheels with only four, but the common ones got five and um, there's another one with seven. Um, I would recommend the seven one because you can always add the filters for uh, for the cool Hubble palette, for, for a very nice looking Hubble palette. And for that you need the SHO filters as you might know. So 
Um, what th one thing I want to um, mention here is if you're using um, the seven position filter wheel, especially the two inch one, like I got the two inch filters here, um, you need to have the whole filter wheel uh, full with filters. I mean, if you got two slots left or not filled with a filter, um, you might run into problems like I had, um, that the filter is filter wheel is moving a little bit because it is out of balance. Um, uh, this can cause some weird big netting and not working flats and stuff like that. So you always have to check that your filter wheel is with a full set of filters and no spot is missing. Otherwise you might run into problems. So let's move on to the interesting part. Now I'm going to uh, compare these Optolong LRGB filters to the ZWO ones and to the astronomic ones because these are uh, also um, filters in the yeah exact or same price range and yeah let's see how they are compared to these other two filters so let's start with I would say ZWO um, and unfortunately I was not able to capture the same object with each filter sets so now we have to um, yeah, have a look at these filters, but um, on different objects. So let's start with, um, as I said, ZWO. Um, as you can see, this is a, an image I took back in 2022, I guess. And let's zoom in on these tiny stars. Um, yeah, as you can see, this is the blue uh, filter. There is no uh, halo visible, I think. Um, Fortunately, we are able to see some halos um, on the very bright stars of the ZWO ones. Um, fortunately, it's it's more unfortunately, but um, it was a good catch that I uh, have another um, reference here. And let's compare it to the green filter. As you can see, it's very similar. And now to the red filter. Yeah, I think the red one is the best. And to the luminance, yeah, it's pretty... Um, bright there but um, <laughs> you can see my flats have not worked in the past but uh, I'm glad I fixed that so let's see if you got some smaller stars the ZWO filters uh, do a great job um, Halo 3 I think that's that's the uh, most um, important part of a filter that is not causing any halos um, let's see the the, um, the very bright stars on the other hand are not um, ideal but yeah okay move on let's look, let's move on to the um, astronomic one and to be honest uh, I was very disappointed with that uh, filter set I've bought them last year in July and <laughs> uh, uh, yeah I don't have to say anything uh, I, I guess you can already see the uh, huge halos on every yeah, medium bright stars and it's and as you can see if it's <laughs> when I uh, come closer to the corners it's even get worse so it's um, the um, yeah not the best uh, filters I got there um, but on the other hand you can see the, the luminance is fine I guess but it, when you come combine these uh, filters you will get some very ugly halos and um, yeah, uh, yeah. Just just for information for you guys, uh, I have tried these filters, all uh, all three filters on the same, um, with the same camera, same optics, and same uh, focal ratio. So we got f three on on all um, images here. Uh, this is also important because most filters perform better or worse in um, certain focal ratios, and yeah. To be honest, these filters here um, are not very designed, the astronomic ones, for perfect uh, halo-free uh, images because they are more for uh, photometric images. So if you really want perfect star colors, these filters are for you, but you have to live with the halos. And yeah, this is one advantage and disadvantage. So, and now let's move on to the um, Optolong filters. So... Uh, this is a recent image I've uh, taken. Um, let's see if it's open. Now it's opening. It's very good. Okay. So this is the Optolong uh, blue filter. <laughs> now, okay. Um, 
yeah, you can see the stars are very tiny. You can barely, these are 20 pixels or so, so it's very, very tiny. Um, also a very good um, yeah, point you have to look at is that um, the stars are not getting bigger and uh, this is also a, a very good indicator that these filters are not bad at all. So um, this is the blue one. Now it's, this is the green one. And this is the red one. So you can't spot any halos, to be honest. This is the luminance. And yeah, I mean, if you really want to find something, you maybe can say, oh, there is a slightly halo. But yeah, to be honest, I, I mean, if you want, you can also, you can always find some, um, some errors in these filters. And I mean, look at the, the stars in the corners. It's, it's almost perfect for a free um, focal ratio. And yeah, this is also, I, I have noted that, that the astronomic filters have bad, uh, worse stars in the corners in the sub ZWO filters than these astronomic filters. So um, yeah, the, the, the Optolong filters are very good, um, especially for, for halo free images and for p tiny pinpoint stars. Let's cut to the point, I guess. Yeah, as you, as you can see, as you have seen, the Optolong filters performing very, very good uh, compared to the other twos. Um, I know it's always a little bit tricky to, comp to compare filters to other ones because you have some, I, I had uh, different objects, um, but I have tried to um, have to compare them to similar star shapes and size and yes, you can see the optimal filters are doing very great for its price, especially, and um, I highly recommend them. I mean, um, you have many options out there. There are many filter sets, but um, me, for me personally, I've, I've tested free now, and I will keep to the Optolong filters for many years. I'm not sure if I will upgrade to the Chroma filters. You might know these are ex very expensive and I'm totally fine with, with these tiny, tiny fraction of halos and they don't bother me. So if you are like me, you have a low budget, want very good filters for its price, go for the Optolong filters. And yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you could learn a little bit something here today. If you have any question, please let me know in the comments. If you want to want me to test something else, let me know too. Um, yeah. So I hope you are okay with my English yes. <laughs> and uh, you can still follow what I've said here. Yeah. Have a nice day, clear skies and see you.